So then, season four is complete, and you want to know how we got on. There's only one way to find out. Let's do this. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84 and today we're going to be looking at season 4 in the 5 year plan whilst we are out in Brazil managing Red Bull Bragantino. If you haven't already been back and seen the first 3 parts, jump on back whilst you're there, maybe hit the subscribe button, hit the like button to help the channel out too. And once you're all caught up, come back and watch this one. But if you're already caught up and you're eager to find out what happens in season 4, we're going to jump straight in and show you exactly what happened in Season 4. As always, we are going to kick off by going through the Season Review pages. You may notice from the opening page there are three trophies to be unveiled this season, so we have had a bit more success. We're going to jump on in and take a look at the new arrivals first. As you can see, we spent a lot of money. We alluded to the fact at the end of the last episode that the Red Bull money was now really coming in, and we smashed our transfer record not once, but twice to sign brand new players. And the most expensive signing at the club now goes to Yuri Alberto. He's a 23-year-old striker, all right midfielder. Come in, had an immediate impact. Unfortunately, could only play in cup games because he played seven games for his previous club in the league. But from his three appearances, he's already scored two goals and achieved a 7.33 rating. We also signed Kao Santos for 9.25k, so bargain really. He made eight appearances, scored two goals and one assist. But then we sent him out on loan. I think he's currently at Minnesota United in the United States. Danilo is another player who's come in. He's a 23-year-old midfielder coming from Palmeiras. He's highly rated and will slot in perfectly alongside McCormack to give us a dominating midfield, really. Another player that we signed, and he has been given signing of the season, is Vanderson. He's a 23-year-old fullback, plays mainly on the right, can play at right wing too. He has been brilliant since he's been at the club. He chipped in with 59 appearances in his debut season. One goal, 11 assists from a right back is amazing. He has an average rating of 7. Pedrinho is another player that's come in, 6 million from Vitoria. He's played 56 games across the season. He had one goal, nine assists and a 7.08 rating. When we look at the transfers out, we were equally as busy there. Again, we got raided a little bit by clubs with release clauses. So Fabricio Bruno ended up moving to Fortaleza for £8 million. That was a deal that was ongoing Fortaleza kept coming back with a bit more, a bit more, and eventually we got it up to eight million and we said that's fine. Leo Ortiz ended up going to Corinthians. That was a buyout clause in his contract. Didn't really want to sell him to another Brazilian club, but Corinthians stepped up, paid the money, took the player, and that was fine. And then one of the other major signings to go out was Iago Mendonca, who was bought a couple of seasons ago on the cheap. We managed to turn him into a five million pound sale. So Quite a good profit there for a player that really wasn't in our plans. Okay, so we move on to the season's results page. Disappointingly, we didn't manage to retain our Serie A title. We had a good run at it. We finished third. We were four points behind Palmeiras at the end, finishing level on points with Flamengo with a slightly inferior goal difference to them. Our goal difference this time was 41, so we did concede a few more. We didn't score as many either with Alarandro not really firing on all cylinders. Uh, we still gave it a really, really good shot, though. We had a record of 25 wins, 7 draws and 6 losses. Board gave us a C plus. They wanted to qualify for the Libertadores, and that's exactly what we did by finishing third. When we move across to the Paulista, Syria A, we did manage to win that. We retained that title. Uh, the board wanted us to finish third. It says on the side here that we finished in third place, but uh, we didn't. We actually are the champions, as you can see by the C next to our names with the 43 points. We played some wonderful football to retain our title. We started off on a fantastic run of four games. 
where we won 5 1, 6 0, 1 0, 3 0. We then lost to Santos, which turned out to be our only loss of that campaign before we then went on a mad winning run where we won 3 1, 5 1, 4 0, 3 0, 3 0, 4 0, 2 0, 2 1, 1 0, and 1 1. Secured us our third Paulista Serie A. And it was an achievement that the board weren't judging us on, but they gave us a B minus anyway. And then the big one, the Copa Libertadores. We finally have won it. So it took us four seasons to do. We've assembled, assembled a side now that is capable of going on and winning these kinds of competitions. We beat Palmeiras 5 3 in a bit of a crazy final. It went one way, it went the other. It looked at one point like we were going to lose and then managed to really dig deep at the end of the game to come out 5 3 winners. Give the club its first ever Libertadores for, um, trophy so the board gave us an a plus for that and we are ecstatic about it it's uh really it was the one that i kept hammering home at the end of the last episode we want to win this we want to win this and finally once we hit the knockout phases never looked back we were never in doubt that we were going to win this competition because we were just moving past teams with ease we also won the copper intel brass do brazil Again, we ran through that competition, swept everybody aside, the international in the final across two legs and picked up that trophy for the first time, I believe. And then in the Supercopa do Brazil, so there's, there's Brazilian Super Cup, we also won that 3-0. Uh, that was the start of the season, so I think that's like the charity shield. Played at a neutral venue. So yeah, we won that 3-0. And that was a pretty straightforward game too. In terms of our moments to remember, the biggest win of the season was a 6-0 win against Gremio Novorizantino. I think I've said that right. So have a little look at those highlights. Again, it was a game, like I said last season, about the team that we felt sorry for. We just absolutely smashed them to pieces. As soon as the first goal went in, you could just tell the heads had dropped 15 minutes on the clock when the first goal goes in, and they really just could not stop us. We were attacking at will and looked like we could have scored a lot more goals than what we actually did. All of the star players turned up. Here's a goal. Raul with a screamer from outside the box, hit it nice and hard and low, and the keeper was never going to get there. All the players that we expect to chip in, chipped in on the day, and it was a real team performance. I mean, we were 6-0 up there, I think, before the 50th minute. No, we were 5-0 up before the 50th minute, 6-0 at full time. So you can see by the stats down in the corner, we had 36 shots, 18 on target, an XG of 5.13, and poor Gremio Novorizantino didn't even have a shot on target, so... Brilliant performance from us. Feel a bit sorry for the littler teams in those kinds of competitions because they really had no chance. The match to remember was a 3-0 win against Lanus in the Libertadores. We won 3-0 at home and again this was a performance of top, top quality. Uh, we dominated the game from start to finish. Didn't really give them a look in. And it was one of those games that kind of built our platform to really perform at the level that I knew that we could win the Libertadores. As you can see from the goals, they're all quality goals. We play some lovely football at times, working it into the box. Okay, there was a couple of tappings in there, but the way that we get into those positions, the way that the players engineer chances for themselves is absolutely mind-blowing sometimes. And then goal of the season goes to Pereira with a top-quality strike as he scored a powerful effort from 23 metres. So luckily it was a 1-0 win, so it's going to be the only highlight in the goals. When we look at these highlights, let's have a little look at that. So we've worked the ball out to wide right. Raul lays it off to him and he's hit it from distance, and that's a screamer. So well-deserved goal of the season there for Pereira. Moving on to the finances page, now you can see that the club has finally got that extra star on its reputation we are a four-star continental reputation team 
don't have any new sponsorship deals over on that side of the page. In terms of sponsorship, it's up to 6.06 .06 million. Our broadcast revenue has gone down slightly from last season, but our corporate and hospitality has gone up. Our competition prize money has massively increased with an extra 20 million coming in, which again is going to hold us in good stead for the next season. Match day commercial and retail is up to 201,000. Total merchandise sales was 1.11 million pounds with domestic, sorry, non-domestic sales amounting to 111,000 of that. And we sold 7,208 shirts this time. So across the season, this was our overall best 11. We had Gabriel Brazau in goal, Weverson, Leo Ortiz, who has moved on, Lucas Holter, Justin, Raul and Luke McCormack, Evaldo, Peglo, Claudinho and Alarandro up front. In terms of the accolades, so again, even though we are winning things, we do not get rewarded. But in terms of the club awards for the players, Luke McCormack was the fans player of the season. Young player of the season was Ivany. Sign of the season was Vanderson. Goal of the season went to Pereira, as we've just seen. Alarandro was top goal scorer with 36 goals. Luke McCormack was top assister with 21 assists. He also had nine player of the match awards. He had an average rating of 7.4. And Pereira had most passes completed per 90 minutes with 50. In terms of competition awards, Alarandro won the Chutira de Oro de Ravista Placar. The Brazilian Cup best goalkeeper was Gabriel Brazau and the Artilero de Campeonato Paulista went to Peglo. Uh, in terms of the record breakers for the club, Alarandro got 36 goals in a season. He also got the most league goals by a player in the season with 25. Gabriel Brazau kept 29 clean sheets. Alarandro continues to add to those most appearances by a player with 178 now. And he also keeps adding to his goal tally, which stands at 92 for the club. So moving on to history in the making. It says that Abi Bragantino started better than anyone else. He yielded a successful season overall. Confirmation, we won the Libertadores, the Copa do Brasil and the Super Copa do Brasil. And it says that Bragantino got rolling early in the season and it looked hard to stop them. So that wraps up the season review. But we're still going to have another look at the leagues and have a look at the stats and a bit more in depth, finances and a few of those players that have come in. And we're also going to have a look at what could happen in season five as we start to wind down. But we've still got plenty of football to come before that. So as always, we're going to start off with the Serie A. It was an OK season. There were points in the league season where we were top and comfortably top. And then we had a bit of a patchy run of form where we dropped off. And in the end, Palmeiras won the league by four points. They were well-deserved winners. And we had the last laugh over them by winning the Libertadores in the final to stop them winning a double. Um, our Win record was 25 wins. We had seven draws and six losses. A goal difference of 41. When we look across the player stats, we had McCormack up there with 11 assists. We had Lucas Holter, who was a naughty boy, with 14 yellow cards. And then we don't have anybody else in any of the positions that we would normally be talking about at the bottom. If we go back and look at the regional Paulista Serie A1, it shows you there that we won against Sao Paulo in the final 2-1 on aggregate. And we had some pretty good stats come out of this competition. So Peglo was top goal scorer with 14. And Matthias Araujo was behind him with 10. Luke McCormack had a 7.76 average rating. And yes, that is Andreas Pereira, who plays for Manchester United in first place. Luke McCormack also finished with... Eight assists and was top of that category. Peglo had five man in the match awards. So he was joint first for that with Pereira. Uh, Gabriel Brazau had nine clean sheets. So was top of that category. And Pedrinho had 0.7 dribbles per 90 minutes. If we go back and have a look at the Libertadores. So there's confirmation that we won 5-3 against Palmeiras in the final. In terms of the player stats, we had Peglo with nine goals, 
Nobody in the average rating. Nobody really got on the assists board. Brazil got six clean sheets, which was joint third place. And we didn't have anybody else in any of those lower stats categories. We also then won the Brazilian Cup 6-0 on aggregate against Internacional. Yuri Alberto is on the list there with six goals, but they weren't all for us. There was two goals for us and four for his previous team. We got Pedrinho on the bad boy list with four yellow cards. Gabriel Brasau got five clean sheets. Peglo had 13.93 kilometres covered per 90 minutes. So that's the competitions rounded up. Let's have a little look at the club finances. So we are still improving in terms of the finances. We have 64 million pounds in the bank, which will make Mr. Matasitz very happy. We have 33.9 million of that available to us to strengthen the squad. So season five goals are to be dominant. And we have a wage budget that's slightly reduced to 487,485. And we are currently only spending 280,000. So plans for domination really are ongoing with that kind of gap in the wage budget. Okay, so looking at our team report and our squad depth, uh, this is the best 11 that the assistant seems to think that we should be playing. So Brazil in goal, Pedrinho at left back, even though he plays more as a left winger. Real Pay and Keiki at the back, he's another player that I actually forgot to mention on the transfers in. We went and stole him from Santos. I don't even think we had to pay a large amount, £6.25 million for one of the best central defenders in Brazil. It was an absolute steal. Justin at right back. McCormack, who is still our star player at the club, next to Danilo, which, as I said, they are going to really be a bruising midfield partnership. They are going to look to dominate every team now that comes to play against us. It's got Ibaldo at left wing, Peglo as the attacking midfielder, Yuri Alberto as the right winger, behind Alejandro, who just continues to grow as a player and he's doing really, really well in terms of his progression. If you have a little look at the strengths, again, it talks about the wage budget, which we've already mentioned. It says there's a number of talented young prospects who's coming through, including Calvin Wellington, who has actually caused a little problem or two, trying to push on ahead of the pack to get into the first team, demanded a move away, which we actually said no to, but he's persistent that he wants to get away from the club. And Angelo, uh, we've also got team in general possess a high level of concentration, which is good. Top goal scorer was Alejandro with 19 strikes, which put him fifth in the competition. Gabriel Brazau is the best of three good options in goal. Pedrinho is one of the best four good options to play at left back. Kaiki is one of six good options at centre back. Gabriel Brazau is a good option in goal. Kaiki is very good at right back, even though he's a centre back. And it goes on to say he's a centre back. So looking at a few of the weaknesses, not the best group of goalkeepers in terms of commanding their area. Last season, I think it was area ability. This season, it's commanding their area. Teamwork could do with improving. Probably going to work on that. Although with a high turnover of players, I presume that is going to be a problem going forward anyway. Um, some players don't seem to want to work hard. That is something that is ongoing. Not too sure what we can really do about that, but we're, we'll give it a go at trying to train them a bit harder. Uh, there is not a great deal of depth outside of the first team amongst players currently at the club. Again, something that we can address with the wage budget and transfer budget that we have available to us. Group isn't blessed with regard to crossing. Not really with the way we play the game anyway. We, As you saw from the highlights that I did show, we work the ball into the box, work opportunities for ourselves and score lots of goals. So I'm not too fussed about that one. Isn't the best squad in terms of penalty taking. That's, uh, again, something that you need a specialist for penalty taking. Not really something that I go out and look for in a player as a high priority. This isn't the best group of goalkeepers in terms of communication. That might be a problem. Although we have got some really good defenders in front of the goalkeeper. So hopefully between them they can all sort that out. Isn't the best squad in terms of free kick takers after we lost Leo Ortiz who had goal of the season last season, I can see why they would say that. Not enough leaders in the squad. That's probably a good point. We are buying under 23 players. It's hard to find those kinds of players when you are signing youth players. 
says there is a lack of determination, which is something that I was trying to address across the season. It doesn't seem that I've achieved that. It says 23 of the 48 assists in the last 49 matches come from through balls. That is something that I just think is happening across the game. I don't think it's something that's just with us. I think there is, in general, a lot of balls over the top, balls to the side that aren't dealt with by defenders. Could go out and buy some more defenders, but I don't think keep rotating defenders is going to help. I think it's just maybe the tactic or the way that we play, but no problems. I'm not really fussed about that anyway. We're going to finish off by looking at the club vision page. This time around, our job is only very secure, which is really strange considering we achieved more than last season. Last season, we did win Serie A, but this season we've won Libertadores, so not too sure why my job is only very secure. But when you look at what the club culture is, they did not want to sign players over the age of 30. They're delighted with that because we don't do that anyway. Play high tempo, pressing football. They're pleased with that because that's the way that we play football. Delighted actually with that. Play attacking football, they're pleased with. Uh, play possession football, pleased with that as well. They make the most set pieces. They are satisfied, so neither here nor there. I think maybe losing one or two of the taller defenders may have brought that down. I think at one point in the season they were pleased. It's come down to satisfied, but really not too fussed about that as long as we're winning games. And then for the five-year plan I'm going, work within the wage budget, that's on course. Minimum of three-year contracts for the first team players. We are not being judged on that, but that's something that they would like. And then by the end of next season, they want us to qualify for the Libertadores and they want us to reach the semi-finals of the Libertadores now. So they've had a taste of success and they are inching that expectation level up. Last season, they only wanted to qualify for the Sudamericana. Now they want to qualify for the Libertadores and reach the semi-final. So that's expected with the amount of money we're throwing around and the amount of money that Red Bull have put in. It's only fair, I think. And it's something that I think is achievable anyway. And then going forwards, they just want us to keep continuing to qualify for the Libertadores, which is something that I think we will be able to do anyway. So that brings to a conclusion our review of Season 4. This save has been quite challenging. It was not difficult to get into, but getting my head around the Brazilian players and the way the league works was challenging. And then as soon as we broke into that territory of winning, we won Serie A last season, we've won Libertadores this season. That means that in Season 5, the aim is going to be to win both. The backing of the board is there. The money is there from the Red Bull machine. I think it's only sensible that we try and build a squad that is capable of playing for everything that we enter. Uh, it's going to be challenging, but if any team can do it now, it's going to be us because we've got the backing. We've got, like I said in the last video, that wealth of talent that comes through, like the Wonder Kids in Brazil are something different. There's a reason that everybody loves a Brazilian wonder kid because we keep finding them, we keep producing them and they really are everything that we look for. So that's going to wrap up this one. I hope you've enjoyed season four. I certainly did. Winning Libertadores was such a good achievement. Tick off. It's another trophy won in the game and everything is pointing to success for this five-year plan. So again, if you're enjoying it, please hit the subscribe button to help the channel out. Hit the thumbs up button too. Any comments you've got, anything you want to know about the save, any of the players you've seen, uh, anything that you want to know in terms of the tactic that we used from NAP, leave it all in the comments section and I'll get back to as many of you as I can. But until season five, this one's a wrap. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon.